she gon' be my girlfriend. That girl right there, white. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, I have people in my room. <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna go from the left to the right. So this is kyla's Hi. a collab she also has a channel as well i would we did a monk thing on her channel talking about relationships so you go check that out i'll leave that in the description and her socials and everything and this is Liana. Liana. Uh, we're all friends yeah. yeah and she does hair she doesn't have a youtube channel but she does hair so if you're in the dmv look nice. my girl okay period i'll be your first <laughs> Okay, so today we're talking about HBCU versus PWI. And disclaimer, this isn't really a versus, but just a conversation on the two, why we chose the schools that we go to now, and just talking about the different conversations on HBCUs, PWIs, you know, black people that go to PWIs and the experiences, how they're different. And yeah, so let's jump right into it. So first things first, where do we all go to school and what's our major? So we'll start with you. My freshman year, I was at Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU, and my major was dance and choreography. Period. Okay, as you guys probably already know from our previous videos, I go to the Norfolk State University, behold the green and gold period, mm -hmm. and my major is music media. I go to the University of Maryland College Park and my major is neuroscience. Brains, brains. So we got, well, you double majored mm -hmm. in business as well as dance. So yeah. we have a woman in business, a woman in the arts, and a STEM woman. So yeah, we have diversity here, guys. Diversity. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is campus life and events on our campuses. Okay, so who wants to start? I'll start. Okay. Okay, so I go to a PWI, like it's very white. So... As a black person on their, on that campus, in order to find good events, you have to find the black community. So that was a big thing for me, like when I first got there, finding like BSU, ASA, places like that, where they have black events because the campus is really truly catered to white people. Like they did an event my first week there where it was like strictly for the black freshmen, but it's like something to kind of make you feel better. Like, yeah, you're at a white school, but here's some black, here's some seasoning. That's basically what that was. <laughs> but I definitely would say like the biggest thing is finding black people. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I pretty much had a similar experience, only that um, at VCU, the black community, they're super hard to find. Like they definitely do say, okay, this is, you know, the Black Student Union and stuff like that. But at the same time, they pretty much stay in the cut. Like, you don't see them. You just don't see representation on campus. So like, in terms of going out and activities and stuff, it was very dry and just, it's a whole different kind of culture. For me, I mean, I go to HBCU, so I don't really have to think about like, finding you don't really have to think about think too much about finding like your group or whatever um i will say i mean obviously not everybody that goes to hbcu is black so sometimes they may feel kind of like outcasted but i mean we really just kind of hang out with anybody there's always a group that you're going to be able to affiliate yourself with um i know we all went to like black high schools for the mm -hmm. most part and i know our high school my my high school personally we had a bunch of different groups that were like, you know, for the Latinos and for the African students, stuff like that. So it was really the same kind of culture on my campus where, you know, you, you can find your spot and you don't really feel too much like an outcast. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't really know what it's, I don't know if it's an outcast feeling you guys feel on your campus or. Definitely. Yeah, I would say that it's like, especially in the classroom, for sure, because mm -hmm. it's like. Even though, you know, people say, like, you, you shouldn't make everything about race. At the end of the day, it is about race. A lot of these kids came from places where there were no black kids. Mm -hmm. Like, they come from money. So it's like their parent, like, and you can feel it. It's like when they see you or when you try to speak to them in the academic environment, they try to make you feel inferior with little, like, microaggressions or little things like that. I wouldn't say it happens often. But, you know, you do experience it. So I would say it is an outcast feeling. But then you kind of get around a group of people like you or people that you fit in with and it's a little better. Mm -hmm. Not saying all black people, <laughs> you know, not all black people will make you feel comfortable, but yeah. you know, you have to find your group. That's interesting. At my school, I mean, it was an outcast in the sense that, maybe not necessarily outcast, but like VCU, they try to pride themselves on diversity, 
even though it's not necessarily diverse for real, but like what they would do at my school, most of the people who aren't black, they would like more so gravitate towards you because you are black. Mm -hmm. Almost like they are fetishizing you in a way like, mm -hmm. ooh, what do you have to say about this? Or like, oh, why does she talk wow. like that? Look at her style like this. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you really have to be careful who you talk to mm -hmm. and who you say what to. That's always the case, but you know, it's very interesting. I'm gonna get extra careful. I would say I only feel that way about uh, conversations about race in class. It's like, especially if you're the one of two or three black people or even the only black person as soon as you bring up race it's like what do you have to think have right. to say? Like, i don't want to say anything like, leave me alone <laughs> right they automatically expect you to have something to say about whatever the topic is concerning black people like i don't speak for my whole entire race mm -hmm. so, yeah. so would you guys say like the parties are like really different like <laughs> oh <laughs> like we've all pretty much experienced like well, first of all, let's say this. We live in PG County, mm -hmm. which is a predominantly black county. Like, I don't ever really feel like a minority here. Right. Like, just for now. <laughs> so we've pretty much all been to, like, parties, mostly black people, good vibes. Not saying other parties don't have good vibes, but, you know, you're comfortable. Yeah. You know, you're comfortable. So would you guys say that the parties are a lot different than what you're used to growing up? I did not party at all when I went to college i went to a couple parties like during freshman week and everything so like for majority of my like here party life i went i was partying in like dc so you know that's the go-go music everybody understands what time it is when certain songs come on. <laughs> you know like it's just a really good vibe but the parties that i went to in richmond um the energy was very low it seems like everybody was kind of feeling each other out I guess, but like, I don't know. They started playing like the Jonas Brothers and Adele. Like, it just wasn't. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Adele. At party, yes, but at the a jo whole the Jonas Brothers at a party? whole party. It was <laughs> no. So after I experienced that, I just no. It wasn't no. I would say the black parties. My school is in PG County still, so the black parties are pretty much what I experienced in high school. They play the trap music, the PG County rappers. They play a little bit of go-go, but not too much because a lot of people are from different parts of Maryland. So they don't really like go-go. Like, PG County and DC likes go-go. So it's mm -hmm. different. They still play it, though. Now, I did go to one white party. And I would just say I won't do that again. Um, <laughs> you actually need... It was like we needed a white person to get in. Like, no joke. Yeah. Like, we had a white guy take us to get in. And, like, was like, oh, you know, like, they're with me. Mm -hmm. And we were the only black people in there. And it was just, they were playing beer pong and stuff. It just wasn't fun. Like, I don't, I don't know. And it was like, they literally jump around. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it, what, 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 what was the song? I think it was like Miley Cyrus or something like that. It just wasn't, it just wasn't fun. So I would say my party experience, I don't party a lot in college, but um, they're mostly like home because my school is in PG County. So while we're on this topic, let's talk about diversity. Obviously, like, and I, I believe this for any institution, PWI or HBCU, not just one specific race goes to that school. There's white people to go to my school too, so. I was gonna ask you that. Yeah, there's white people to go to my school. So, okay, we're talking about diversity. Okay. So, there are white people to go to my school. You don't see them too often because they, um, they mo they're more than likely there for sports yeah. on sports scholarships oh. hmm. and they mo more than likely grew up in that area and so my school is a state school so you know they go to that school they get scholarships for but you do see them in the cab like you see them in the cab you see them in the gym i mean they date the black people that go there all that so i mean it's that i've seen some some asians on my campus i can't lie and say i came in and thought i was going to see other races i did think that okay just black people but yeah. I learned like HBC HBCUs are more diverse than what you really know. University of Maryland is definitely very diverse. The white people just are the majority. Mm -hmm. We have people from everywhere and because the campus is so big and our population is like 40,000, we have a lot of people on campus. We have a lot of international students. I've met people from all over the United States, but it's just the mi minority groups, the different groups of people are just small. It's, the, it's still majority white, but there is a lot of diversity. And I will say, one thing that Yondi does is they have a lot of different organizations that um, cater to the diverse diversity of the um, demographic, like of the campus. So we have different, um, what is it? 
like different types of organizations that cater to people from all over, which is one thing I appreciate. I would say that's more of the students doing because they start these organizations, mm -hmm. but that's one thing. As a student there, you can definitely find something for you no matter what you're into. Like they have like juggling clubs, they have literally everything, but in, mm -hmm. in terms of where you're from, your ethnicity, they have clubs for that also. So I would say there's a home for everybody. You just have to look for it. So in terms of like, the ratio and things like that. I would agree with Liana that VCU, they pretty much, it's it's decently diverse, but it's not as much as they advertise it to be. Because like literally, if you go on the website, it's like diversity here, but <laughs> that's just simply not the case. So it definitely is predominantly white. And then <sighs> their diversity, it's advertised like they make sure that they find the group of black people to mm -hmm. take pictures of like that's it's like that like yeah. it's not when you step on campus this is really not all that um but for my major specifically because on my dance major at least mm -hmm. i pretty much saw the same people every day and i want to say that in our class we had it might have been like so like 30% black and then, which I, I think that's a that's good, pretty, honestly. right? It was pretty decent. And then we had Asian, a couple of Asian, and then the rest white, so. UMD's like 12, not even 12% black. I have a question. It was like something that you had said that made me think of this. So do you think it's the student's responsibility to kind of create some diversity? Like say if you go to a school and you know, people from different backgrounds go to their school, but do mm -hmm. you think it's, our responsibility as students to kind of bring everybody together and making a melting pot or is it the school's responsibility? I think that it honestly is a balance of both. Now the problem is when schools don't create make it easy for students to create these um, opportunities for students to come together. Mm -hmm. So it's like I feel like the students can take the initiative like yes you know we have we want to start this club or that club for people that are like me that want that are interested in these things or that are from this area but at the same time the school shouldn't make it super difficult or have you know platforms that are only one from one demographic that are getting these things started like your leadership board shouldn't look like one person your big organizations that handle things like that the creation of orgs or student council things like that shouldn't look like one person because if that's the case things will continue to be the same like there won't ever be a change you guys feel like your university off offers opportunities for people who look like you or like in general um do you feel like it's harder to <laughs> <I'm> sorry <laughs> Do you feel like it's harder to find opportunities on your campus for your major being black? Anyway, I want to dive in it. Go so I'm actually transferring from VCU. For <laughs> now she wants reason. to say it. Now she wants to say yeah, it. Yeah, but I'm Good. not telling where I'm going, but I Good. definitely am transferring from VCU for this reason specifically. So with um, one of my majors being dance, very hard major to find, period. Mm -hmm. Period. In any university. Um... Being a black woman in dance is different than the Caucasian background that I was studying in college. So like we would have dance history classes and I wasn't learning about my people at all. There's just no representation. It literally isn't. They might talk about the one or two people that are very noticeable like Alvin Ailey. Everybody knows Alvin mm -hmm. Ailey, but they're not really talking about the people behind him and the people before him, all of that. So. You're primarily learning about a culture that really isn't yours. And that is key information to have. But at the same time, I need to get some things that will benefit me personally. Because me going into the field, realistically, I'm not getting a job in a white company. <laughs> I was really thinking because that's so true. Because even with me going to this doctor. But even with me going to a white company, like when I was younger, we did not learn about black dance. Exactly. We learned about she Madonna dances Bird, too. Kashegi, that was it. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's all you learned. You didn't learn about anything black. Even though we were doing jazz and all this stuff that derived from black people, mm -hmm. so you dance, all didn't that. learn nothing about black. But they want you to learn them French words, I'll tell you that. You better <laughs> know. But um, anyway, honestly speaking... Since it's only been one year, I haven't really been looking too much for like, you know, job opportunities or anything like that. But I would say that they don't really make it hard because UMD is so big that like every, what you, 
experience is kind of up to you like they have job fairs they have things that you can do internship fairs things like that but if you don't go like you just won't get seen and they put the information out there it's just up to you to grab it the only thing i would say is that you might feel uncomfortable because you're not around like black people you know mm -hmm. it might not you might not be walking into the job opportunity and you see a black executive mm -hmm. but at the same time i wouldn't say that they make they make difficult opportunities i would say that there's equal opportunity because umd just has so many resources mm -hmm. um they have so many connections to like outside jobs and they have organizations for people of color that will help you get you know in contact with these um jobs and stuff like that so i wouldn't say that it's hard to get opportunities there from what i've experienced and i would say this for any institution really like just going to college and having higher education, like people before you graduated and are working in a lot of these fields that all of us are graduating from. And I feel like no matter where you come from, you're gonna find somebody who either went to the same school you did or went to you know, a similar institution is gonna wanna help you. Being an African-American and having a degree just carry so much weight on its own no matter mm -hmm. where you go. Opportunities on my campus, I know there's a stigma that like, oh, you know, I would rather go to a PWI, some people say this, I would rather go to a PWI versus the HBCU because a PWI will bring me more opportunities. And it's literally like, let's let's cut that out right mm -hmm. here. Like we have, we still have job fairs. <laughs> we mm -hmm. still have people that come back. This is what I'm talking about alumni, like they will come back and offer you job <laughs> okay and i will say that it's really a stigma because i'm not gonna lie i thought that like i thought that you know i would have better opportunities at a pwi it's the information i feel like that's being given to us yeah. by these guidance counselors yeah. these people in our communities that honestly be anti-black if we're being honest <laughs> so it's like yes. <laughs> really be yes. guidance counselor. Yes. so it's like one thing i've noticed about hbcus like she said the full circle moment it's like we know how hard it is for our people, so we go back mm -hmm. to these environments and we give back. And that's one thing that I feel like I miss at a PWI. The people yes. um, that have graduated from these great, illustrious HBCUs, they come back and they're trying to make opportunities because they know how hard it is. Mm -hmm. These white people are not looking to give you a handout. Okay. Let me tell you, they're not. I so I feel like that's definitely one huge pro of going to HBCU, that mm -hmm. family that like, that let me help base. you out. Yes. Yeah. It's literally a family. And it's it's like, literally a, a community of people that want to see you thrive yes. consistently. Like mm -hmm. you never have mm -hmm. to... I'm not saying that you guys have to do this or anybody that goes to PW has to do this, but you never have to feel like you have to code switch mm -hmm. or like change yourself yes. to, or pr always have to That's prove that you're worthy mm -hmm. of the same opportunities of your, as your peers because you're a different color. I'm so sorry. I have to say something real quick. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead so I had a situation where I got a 4.0 both of the semesters. Um, my freshman year of college mm -hmm. so i got mm -hmm. a cute little scholarship initially going cute. into the school and um right it was cute <laughs> it was cute but i'm an out-of-state student and vcu's prices honey mm -hmm. it wasn't cutting it so i then proceeded to i set up a meeting and all that with my advisor and my department chair and of course i asked for more money right mm -hmm. I did not get it. I literally applied for the scholarship and everything. Mind you, I'm very active on campus in the ways that I can be. I got a work study job. I'm a research assistant, all of that. Wow. Mm -hmm. I did not get that money at all. Wow. 4.0. 4.0. How did I not get, get that money at all? Right, yeah. like, what do you want from me at this point? Like, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Hey, guys. I just wanted to come on here and thank you guys for making it this far. I know this video is a lot longer than... Uh, my normal videos but I just wanted to thank you guys for watching this video was super long like originally all the clips put together would have been a 30 minute video so I decided to split it into part one and part two so thank you guys for watching part one part two will be up shortly if you guys have any questions for me or any of the other girls I will have all of our social media handles linked below don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video